Until recently, computers have been relatively simple. Even the most powerful machines can only carry out the specific tasks they've been programmed for. This limits the scope of what they can do and how we can use them. After all, the real world is messy and unpredictable and computers aren't good at dealing with that. But what if machines could think like humans? What if software could learn new things by itself? That's been a goal of scientists working on artificial intelligence since the very dawn of the information age, but it's proved a near impossible task. That might be about to change. A piece of software developed in London could just herald the biggest step forward in artificial intelligence and technology for decades. That software is called AlphaGo. It was developed playing simple computer games, and now it's about to take on the best player in the world in a Chinese board game called Go. A game of such complexity and intuition, no machine has ever been able to master it. AlphaGo's creator is the British startup Google DeepMind. So the game of Go has just two rules, but out of that, those rules comes uh, profound complexity. There are more possible board configurations in the game of Go than there are atoms in the universe. So really, it takes a whole lifetime to master. We're ready now for the sort of next step for us, which is the ultimate challenge to take on one of the world's top Go players. So we've decided to challenge Lisa Doll in a million dollar um, five game match. Uh, Lisa Doll is the greatest Go player of the last decade, probably one of the greatest Go players of all time. Um, I describe him as the Roger Federer of Go. And, um, you know, the, the press and the excitement there is just huge from the general population because they really love technology and they love Go. Human professional players at the top of the game, you know, they're extremely creative and they'll do unexpected things that your own systems won't do. So we're pretty confident. Our internal tests are saying we're, we should do pretty well. But uh, Lee Sedol also, you know, he's been interviewed by the Korean press and he's very confident of, uh, of winning. So it's going to be a very interesting matchup. Of course, this isn't the first time computers have beaten humans in a board game. But what really marks out AlphaGo from the machines that mastered noughts and crosses in the 1950s and eventually chess in the 1990s is not just its ability to play a much more difficult game. It's the way it plays the game, by learning. AlphaGo actually learns how to play in quite a human-like manner. So the way we start off um, training AlphaGo is by showing it 100,000 games that strong amateurs have played that we've downloaded from the internet. And we first initially get AlphaGo to mimic the human player. So uh, we give it a position uh, and we train it to uh, predict the move that the human expert made. Um, but of course, ultimately, we would like uh, AlphaGo to be stronger than uh, human amateurs and compete with the top professionals. So the way we do that is, after we take that first version that's learned to mimic human play, we then allow it to play itself 30 million times on our servers. And uh, using reinforcement learning, um, it, the, the, the system learns to improve itself incrementally uh, through uh, it avoiding its errors and increasing um, and improving its win rate against older versions of itself. Uh, and after all these games, um, then you end up with a new version that can beat the old version, the original version, around 80-90% of the time. The computer Deep Blue has tonight triumphed over the world chess champion Garry Kasparov. It's the first time a machine has defeated a reigning world champion in a classical chess match. Deep Blue Kasparov, after the move C4, has resigned. This is in many ways a more interesting uh, piece of software than Deep Blue, which was the piece of code that did beat Garry Kasparov back in 1997. Why are people excited at the moment? I think that's because these machine learning techniques have uh, made a little bit of a breakthrough at the sort of lowest level of functionality that's really important for AI, which is perception. So being able to take raw data, large quantities of raw data, such as images or sounds, and to be able to, to do the basic processing and recognize what's there. Key to understanding why AlphaGo could be a much bigger breakthrough than Deep Blue is to see just how differently the two machines work. Deep Blue was programmed to recognize the value of each piece on the chessboard. It then used raw computing power to search every possibility to work out which one was best. It's a bit like trying every password combination until the safe unlocks. But ask Deep Blue to do anything other than play chess, like even play a much simpler game, and it just won't know where to start. 
AlphaGo is different. Like a human, it can't measure all the possibilities in Go. There are just too many. Instead, AlphaGo teaches itself to play the game by watching thousands of others, playing matches against itself and learning from its own mistakes. When historians come to write about the 21st century, I believe this match will be seen as a pivotal moment in our relationship with technology. Because as DeepMind software shows, we may be entering an age of thinking machines and general artificial intelligence capable of carrying out a huge number of tasks currently done by humans. And whether or not DeepMind wins the game, it's likely that intelligent machines are going to have a profound impact on the world around us. AI can make great contributions to things like medical imaging diagnosis, to self-driving cars, to image recognition processing so that computers can understand what they see. Going beyond this, real general AI means that these systems can do all of these things together and maybe can, can guide robots to make the right decisions so that they can behave with humans and, and participate in our world. The whole point about general AI is, is to, to not put bounds on any specific thing they can do, but to provide a general resource, a general technology whereby computers can make smart decisions, can understand what they're doing. That's the really open challenge for AI, is to try to make uh, AI um, more and more general and more and more robust to situations that it wasn't programmed for. The next step for DeepMind's technology is applying it to real-world situations, not just games. The idea is that we, you know, these algorithms that we're working on are general purpose and uh, can be translated into these new domains. So we'd love to uh, use these uh, types of algorithms for things like healthcare and science and improve the speed of breakthroughs in those areas by helping uh, uh, human experts uh, achieve more. The match against the world's best Go player is a key milestone in the development of technology. It could represent the dawn of machines that think like humans and open up the possibility of advanced artificial intelligence impacting huge areas of our lives. This may all sound like science fiction, but now it might really be just around the corner.